Okay, we've downloaded our uh, global file to our SD card. Uh, we've saved it as something unique that we know that we're going to need uh, in case we need to go back for any reason. And we're ready to start. So I've opened up the software. We're going to go to our transmission ICF. Everything up here are things that you've already entered so that your transmission will work. Down here in the speed calculation, this is tire diameter. We measured that, 33 inches. Uh, our uh, rear end is a 410 on this truck. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to click speedometer output enable. Uh, this defaults to 4,000 pulses per mile. Um, so when you're setting up uh, any aftermarket speedometer, including the NVU speedometer, uh, the pulses per mile, uh, or your PPM, you'll see it's described different ways. What that'll do is that will... Um, these two numbers really need to match. That way you'll be, if you have your tire size in and your gear ratio in and all this stuff is correct, if this number matches what you've set in the speedometer, you should be ready to go. It shouldn't have to do anything. You can also do a drive a mile to really dial it in. But what we're gonna do here is, um, we're going to, we can leave this at 4,000 pulses per mile. The uh, NVU speedometer will work at 4,000 pulses per mile. Uh, personally, I like to, um, have a little more pulses uh, that way at lower speeds it's it's even smoother because you're getting more information so i'm going to set that to 16,000 pulses per mile enable speedometer output okay so that's that now on the input output section we're going to go to transmission outputs so it says here this function is a speedo it hasn't been defined into the uh on the pin yet we'll do that in a second output type now here this is um this is pretty important. Uh, we're running V1, so we've only got one option here, PWM negative. Uh, I know a lot of people str have struggled on getting the speedometer work with this V1 software with this with this setting. What the, what this means is uh, is is the is the uh, Holly is sending out a, a signal that's going ground 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 ground, uh, very similar to what a a, a GM PCM uh, tech signal looks like. So we're going to have to install a pull-up resistor. So it's going to change it from going ground, 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 ground to ground positive, ground positive, ground positive. Um, and that way the speedometer will work. Now on the later versions, you have different options. You have PWM neg negative, PWM positive, and then PWM positive negative. You want to choose the PWM positive negative. Um, now according to the documentation, when you click, you know, Regardless of what you click on here, it should generate a square wave, which it does not. We've checked this on a scope. Um, unless it says PWM positive negative, it does not generate a Hall effect signal. Uh, we've contacted Holly on this. We've talked to the tech department, sent them emails, and it is not correct. So we're going to have to use a pull-up resistor on this. Um, okay, so that's all set. Now we're going to go to our pin map. We're going to go up here to view outputs. Uh, right over here, your J1 connector, you've got your four outputs. Um, now, uh, this here, you know, we've got our speedometer up here. We're not using this output, so we're going to put it down there. So let's say this was full, okay, and you wanted to remove something. You can just put it up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our speedometer down here. Okay, so the speedometer is going to be on the output number four. We're going to take a look on our instruction book uh, in another step, and then we are going to um, get this thing done. So that's it. You hit done. We're going to save our global file, save global file as. We're going to save it as whatever the last version was and put speedo at the end. We'll upload it to our, um, upload it to our uh, PCM, and we should be ready to go. All right, we're back in our engine compartment. Here's our Terminator X in the engine compartment. Here's all of our wiring all over the place. It's, it's actually relatively neat. Here's our input outputs. It says it right there. And one side, all the grays are the outputs, all the whites are the inputs. We're gonna be focusing on the output. So we set it up in our software here. Output number four, B3 harness connector, Gray and green. Right now it's unassigned. Well, we just did that in the in the uh, in the software. So we went we went gray and green. That's this wire right here, gray and green. Out of the output side, 
and we ran that right next to our pressure and temperature sender. The, uh, the wire is only about 36 inches long, so what I did was, right there about half, you know, when I ran out of wire out of the holly, I changed it to orange. And the reason why I changed it to orange is that's the same color on our harness for our gauges as our speed signal. So we were just ran that into the cab, and that's all set. Now here's what we're talking about when it comes to the pull-up resistor. What this is, is uh, actually this is a 10K ohm resistor. It actually came in the LS kit that we used on the... Uh, when we did the uh, sensor in installation and all this is is this is going to go so this red wire shows our uh, power wire going to our gauges this orange wire is our, our speed signal wire um, typically whenever I'm wiring something I use the same colors all the time so all we need to do is we need to take this this resistor and it's going to end up basically going between the two like that Oops, sorry there's a shadow so basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect the power to the speed signal wire. This is the switch power that goes to the gauges, like on the harness. And what, what, what a PWM negative signal is, is it's going uh, negative, 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 negative. And what happens is, in between those negatives, this little resistor lets a little bit of power over every time. So it's going negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And that's what's creating the square wave. So it's really um it's really that simple sorry my finger is in the way there so i just used the the pull-up resistor out of the ls kit that we already had for our senders and since on the holly system i didn't need to use it on the tack where you would need now the same type of thing on the uh the gm pcm for the tachometer same deal but since we didn't need this resistor on the uh tack because the holly system already has a square wave coming out of it for the tack we just did that so that's how easy that was to make this work. Then all we did was we just came in here, got into our setup mode. Um, I set the filter to medium. Set the, uh, the new vintage gauges come preset at 16,000, which we set it in the software at 16,000. Uh, we can also do a drive a mile if we want to really zero in on this thing. Um, We'll go, uh, what we'll do is we'll go over here to our 3.5 inch screen. One of these has the speed, ah, this has the speed on it. Okay, so let's uh, take a ride and let's see if we can uh, see the speedometer and the screen at the same time. All right, let's take her for a ride. Okay, so I've got this set at 16,000. This is set at 16,000. I have this on medium, low or high. It shouldn't really matter. I mean, you can play around depending on your, your, your signal. Let's see what we got. Four backwards, it's working. the new tune and uh, we should be ready to go. I'm going to turn the lights here so we can see it a little bit better. Hopefully it shows up on the camera. So 14-14, pointers moving, pointer steady. down the road keep going like 50 or 60 make sure everything's nice and steady but again the we have v1 software on here the v2 and v3 automatically output a square wave 
So those of you who are running the earlier software and you only have the PWM negative, <coughs> you'll have to use the pull-up resistor to turn that into a square wave. If you have the V2, you'll have to select positive, you know, PWM positive negative. According to the documentation from Holly, it should automatically output a, a square wave to run an aftermarket gauge. Now that probably won't run an original equipment square. It may or may not. It depends on what what make of a vehicle you have to run the original speedometer. It, it may actually work, but there's other ways around that. Right here, we're just focused on getting these uh, NVU gauges to work out of the Holly system.
thing too is, you know, the, the NPU speedometers will go down to 4,000 pulses per mile. The Holly system defaults to 4,000. You can use that too. Um, I just set the software, the Holly software to 16,000 because that's what the gauge is already at. I already had the tire and the rear end and all that in there. Um, so I just left it that way. Um, I do like to use more pulses than less um, just because I think that the, you get a little better uh, uh, reaction out of the speedometer at slower speeds. Um, but 4,000 is fine. That's what, that's what uh, every time I've done an LS I, uh, out of the P GM PCM, I just leave it at 4,000 and it's fine. So I'd say this, this install is pretty much done. Now, 